you know, every family has uh, at least kind of one jokester in it, right? Uh, that one person that likes to laugh, that pulls practical jokes. Um, in my family, yes, I see you all looking around. You're looking at that one person. <laughs> in my family, that's my oldest daughter, Madison. She just, she loves to laugh. Um, she loves to watch, uh, like her favorite uh, sitcom is The Office. So and she's, I don't know how many times she's watched it from beginning. She's like, Dad, you, if you watch it, you got to start at the first season, okay? <laughs> okay. She loves, and she loves one-liners. That's Madison's thing. And uh, lately, she's been posting these uh, one-liner pickup lines. Like this is one she posted the other day. She said uh, uh, on her Instagram post, she said, do you believe in love at first sight? Or would you like me to walk past again? <laughs> well, that's funny. She loves that. She loves that kind of stuff. Her coworkers just think she's crazy because she just comes up with this endless supply of, of one-liners. Well, I sent her a joke. Uh, this week, and this is the this is the one that I sent her. So, a woman comes home from shopping to find that her house is being robbed. Right, and she sees the thief, and she yells out, "Acts two thirty eight, repent and be baptized." Immediately, the thief surrenders. Like, all right, she calls the police. They handcuff him, and as they're taking him away, they ask him, "Why did you give up so easily?" And the thief said, "Well." She yelled that she had an axe in 238. What was I supposed to do? Yeah, that's good. Uh, you're wondering how I'm going to work this into my sermon, aren't you? <laughs> Don't worry, it's not. All right. <laughs> well, we're starting a brand new series uh, about nine weeks long. It's going to take us into Easter uh, on the book of Mark. Um, super excited about this. Uh, Pastor Dave and I are going to kind of be going back and forth on this one. Uh, but uh, the book of Mark, as we just kind of get rolling this morning, just to give you just a little bit of background, I think that this kind of stuff is important to know. Um, uh, maybe it's just trivia to you, but, uh, you know, you never know when you'll be at a party and you need to know who wrote the book of Mark. Who was it? Do you know? Yeah, Mark, that's right. <laughs> Got to get up pretty early to fool you guys. All right, the book of Mark, first of the four Gospels to be written. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, okay. Mark was the first of the four Gospels to be written. Um, the key verse for the book of Mark is Mark 10, 45. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, to give his, ran his life as a ransom for many. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And that's a great theme in this book. You know, so much of, of the kingdom of God is upside down and backwards. And Kevin talked a little bit about that. Uh, this morning when he talked about grace. But, but, but God's economy, the things in God's kingdom, and they're, they're just like kind of backwards to the world that we live in, right? Jesus uh, said, uh, uh, when someone offends you, what do you do? Do you go after him and you sue him for libel? No, you turn the other cheek. Someone asked him, uh, my brother, he keeps offending me. How many times do I forgive him? And Jesus said, as many times as he offends you. Doesn't sound like very good boundaries, huh? All kinds of things, Jesus said, that are kind of contrary to, to our culture. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And so that's kind of our, our theme for the book of Mark, follow the servant. I mean, normally we would say follow the leader, but uh, in this case, we're going to follow the servant. We're going to follow Jesus' lead as he serves uh, the people around him, and he teaches us what servanthood is all about. And uh, so have you ever wondered why there are four Gospels? All right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all in, in a lot of ways very similar, especially Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John's a, a, a little bit different, but lots of, lots of reasons why we have four Gospels. The primary one is that, you know, the four different Gospels give us four different perspectives on Jesus and his life, on who he is and, and why he came. Okay, they were all written to different audiences. They were all written by different people from different perspectives. And so they all kind of give us a little bit different angle on Jesus. And the book of Mark is, is uh, definitely probably one of the least studied books. Like, you know, everybody loves Matthew, but Mark kind of gets left out sometimes. And so uh, we thought we would tackle this book. And uh, again, it'll kind of get us 
through the Easter season. So as we get into this, let me just say this, and uh, you'll kind of see how this ties in here in just a minute. But um, New Hope, I, I, I believe with all of my heart that God has not called New Hope to be a big church. I do not believe that God has called New Hope to be a big church. I believe God has called New Hope to build big people. I don't believe that God calls churches to be big churches, and especially for us here at New Hope. I do not believe that he has called us to be a big church, but I do believe that he has called us to build big people. We've expressed it this way in our purpose statement. Okay, Our purpose here at New Hope, we exist to glorify God by making disciples of Jesus Christ. We're not here to, to build a building. We're here to, to build people. We're not here to put bodies in seats, right? We're here to, to grow people, to build people. We're not here to build a budget. We're here to, to grow people. We're not here to grow our building. We're here to grow people, and that's why we exist. And, and I love uh, this first chapter in the book of Mark because I believe it gives us a kind of a snapshot picture of what that process of discipleship looks like, okay? That process of, of growth, that process of, of growing people. I think it gives us a little bit of a snapshot. So this morning, I want to look at uh, part of the book of Mark, and uh, helps if I turn this on. I want to give you three things that Jesus calls us to, three things that Jesus calls us to in the book of Mark. All right, so if you've got your Bible, go there. Mark chapter 1, or you can read it here on the screen. Let me give you just a little bit of background here, right? So Mark, uh, as he's writing, he kind of jumps right into the story. You know, the book of Matthew starts with some genealogy, talks a little bit about Jesus' background, a little bit about his birth. But book of Luke gives us a great picture of Jesus' birth. Uh, the book of John, you know, uh, has a really, uh, really cool preamble to it. But the Mark, Mark jumps right into the story. Okay, and it begins with John the Baptist and John's ministry, right? John is, he's a guy, he was the one who was prophesied would, would come before Jesus. He would prepare the way. So he's a guy that wore camel's hair, uh, clothes, and uh, ate honey. And uh, yeah, I mean, he was just kind of this wild man. But he proclaimed this message. He said, repent and be baptized. And one, one day Jesus just shows up. And John recognizes him as the Messiah. See, all Jews knew that there were, there were the, the Old Testament was, of course, they didn't call it the Old Testament back then, but that, that, their, uh, that their Bible was littered with prophecies about this Messiah that God would someday send. And John recognized Jesus as that coming Messiah. And, and, and he comes to John, and Jesus says, I want you to baptize me. So John baptizes him, and it's, it's a great... It's a great scene where uh, Jesus is baptized, and as he's baptized, the heavens open, and there's a voice. It's God, the Father, and he says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then it says the heaven is open up, and the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove. And then Jesus goes into the wilderness for 40 days, where he's, he fasts and he's tempted by the devil, and at one point, Satan takes him up to this, this high pinnacle, and he says, Jesus, if you will worship me, I will give you everything that you see. Of course, Jesus declines, and he gets done with that 40 days in the wilderness, and he comes out of the wilderness, and he begins his ministry in this region of Israel called Galilee. So that's how the book of Mark begins, and we're going to jump right in at verse 14, chapter 1, verse 14. This is three things that Jesus calls us to. After John was arrested, okay, John the Baptist was arrested by uh, King Herod um, because he dis they disagreed on some things. <laughs> and so he was arrested. It says, after John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the good news of God. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. What is the good news? The good news is that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is has come near. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, uh, what, is it, what, is, what is Jesus talking about there? And he says the kingdom of God has come near. Okay, 
I said it a minute ago that, that every good Jew understood that at some point God was going to send a Messiah to, to save Israel from their sin. And Jesus was basically proclaiming, it's happening. That's what's happening now. God's, God's rule, his authority over the earth is, is being restored. His, his authority, his rule over men's hearts is being restored. The kingdom of God is at hand, he says. Remember I said, uh, and I've said this a number of times, okay, the Bible is really the story of God getting his family back. Okay, the family that was lost when Adam and Eve chose to obey Satan, our enemy, rather than God the Father. At that point, when that happened, authority over the earth and men's hearts was given to our enemy. Okay? The Bible is a story of God redeeming, taking back okay, what he had lost. It's a story of God getting his, literally getting his family back, getting his creation back. And Jesus comes and he says, this is happening. The Messiah is here, the kingdom of God, it's happening now. The first step to entering God's kingdom, he says, is repentance. And that's the first thing that Jesus calls us to. He calls us to repentance. Repentance literally means to change one's mind. I love this definition of repentance. Repentance is the willful determination to turn from a life of sin and self-rule to a life ruled by God and lived in his righteousness. Repentance is the willful determination, let me read it again, to turn from a life of sin and self-rule to a life ruled by God and lived in his righteousness. Repentance literally means I'm headed this direction, I'm living my own life, I'm ignoring what God wants for me, but I'm going to turn 180 degrees. In the first service, I said 90. And of course, this is not 90. And an engineer, of course, in the congregation said, yeah, you need to fix that. So it's a 180 degree turn, right? And it's a change of direction, a change of mind. So I'm going my own way, but I'm going to change and I'm going to walk towards God. I'm going to walk towards his desires and the things that he has for my life. That is repentance, okay? To literally change one's mind, all right? Repentance reminds us of our need for an advocate. We can't, it reminds us that we can't escape sin on our own, that we need help. In Isaiah chapter six, verses one through seven, there's this great picture, okay? The, the prophet Isaiah is, is taken to the actual throne room of God. And when he encounters God, he is in awe of God's perfection, in awe of his holiness. And Isaiah responds, he says, Woe am I, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And an angel takes a, 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 a coal from the altar fire, and he touches Isaiah's lips, and he says, Don't worry, <laughs> we got you covered. You are cleansed. Okay, We, we have... We have need for forgiveness. We have a need for redemption. We have a need for, for cleansing that we cannot achieve on our own. And repentance, admitting that state, admitting that fact, and, and, and literally turning from our former direction and heading in a new direction, that is repentance. Acts 2.38, right? And Acts, and two, see, you're, never, you're not going to forget this now. Acts 2.38 is, is Peter's first message to to the men in Jerusalem. So there's some crazy stuff going on in Jerusalem, right? Uh, right after Jesus uh, leaves the earth, he ascends to heaven, and he leaves the disciples to do their things, and he leaves with them. Who does he leave with them? He sends the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit descends, and some, some crazy things, you know, they're speaking in tongues, they're, they're doing all kinds of crazy, and, and the people, the men, specifically in Jerusalem, say, oh, these guys are drunk, <laughs> They're crazy. What is going on? And Peter stands up and he says, no, they're not drunk. Okay, this is God's doing. And, and he begins to explain who Jesus is, why he was sent, what he has done for them. And then in chapter 2, verse 38, he gives them this message. When they ask him, so what do we do? How do we respond to that? What do we do with this? Peter says, repent and be baptized. Turn from your old way and turn towards God. 
I love what it says in Luke chapter 15, verse 7 about repentance. It says that there is joy in heaven, that there's literally a celebration in heaven every time a lost sinner repents. I don't know where you're at in your relationship with God this morning. Uh, Maybe you've been walking your own way, and it's time that you change direction and start walking towards God. And that begins with repentance, admitting, admitting your sin before God, recognizing your need to be saved from that sin, recognizing your need for a Savior. Jesus was sent uh, out of God's love. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, you know it, that God, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Out of his love, he sent Jesus for you. And if you've never repented and received Christ as your Savior, I'm going to give you a chance to do that at the end of the service uh, here in just a few minutes. But repentance, not just for uh, first-time believers, it doesn't matter how long you've known Jesus, repentance ought to be a daily act for us. It ought to be something that we do on a regular basis. Basis, Because when we repent, we keep a short account of our sins with God, okay? When it's, when it's a daily exercise, it reminds us of the deep, deep love that God has for us. It, re- it reminds us where we've come from and where we're headed. Okay, repentance ought to be a part of every believer's life. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Though my sins were scarlet... They are now, what? White as snow, yes. Okay, that ought, to, that ought to ring true this morning as you look out your window on the way home. Okay, though my sins were as scarlet, they are white as snow because repentance results in cleansing. Verse 16. Uh, as he was passing along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, Simon's brother, They were casting a net into the sea since they were fishermen. Follow me, Jesus told them, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The second thing that Jesus does Uh, The second call that he gives us is this call to follow him. So here's here's Jesus calling Simon, Andrew, James, and John to to something more. I mean, there was there's no doubt in my mind that you know they were aware of who Jesus was. Uh, If you go to the book of John, uh, it talks about Andrew was actually a a disciple of John the Baptist, so he knew about Jesus. And Jesus comes along and he says, "Hey, follow me. I want to take you a little bit further. I want to." I want to take you a little bit deeper. I want to give you something a little bit more. And I believe that that is what God is calling us to do, that he's calling us to trust him more. When he calls us to follow him, he's calling us to to trust him more, and he's calling us to deeper intimacy with him. I mean, that's God's desire for us, is that we would grow in our relationship with him. Following him is equal to, to growing in, in, in our knowledge of him, growing in our intimacy, growing in our ability to trust him. First Corinthians chapter three, Paul gets on the Corinthians because uh, they haven't been doing this. He says, you guys are immature, All right? You're, you're, you're drinking milk. You should be eating solid food by now. Get on the ball, get moving. You're immature. I love this, uh, this video. Uh, this is a video uh, I've shown before, but I think it's just this great illustration uh, of God's call for us to trust him more. Jesus, I just don't trust you. You don't trust me? No, I mean, I want to trust you. I just don't. <laughs> I have an exercise that I think will really help. Oh, okay. Stand here and face this direction. Mm-hmm. Now, do you trust me? Uh, no, I just said I don't trust you. Right. Well, this is all part of the exercise, oh, all right? right. Okay. Whenever I ask you if you trust me, you say, yes, Jesus, I trust you. Even though I don't. It's practice. Okay. So, do you trust me? Uh, yes, Jesus, I trust you. Now, fall back. 
Are you gonna catch me? Don't worry about that. Part. Okay, that's the part I'm worried about. <laughs> you can do this, okay? Just trust me. Trust you. Fall back. Okay, well, Jesus, I trust Good. you. <laughs> yes, I do trust you. I'm gonna fall okay. back. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's great. Uh, okay. Let's try this again. Just face this direction and keep your feet planted, all right? Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus, I trust you. Now, fall back. Okay, I'm gonna do it. All right. I'm really gonna do it. <laughs> Good. Ah! Oh, Jesus, you really caught me! I didn't think you were gonna catch me, but you did! Oh, that was great! Like, that was great! <laughs> You're ready for level two! Level two, here yes. I come, baby! Woo! Oh. Whoa. Okay, hold it. <laughs> oh, you know what? You're too close. You need to move back. <laughs> ah, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this one's a little bit different, Laura. Oh, okay. Uh, stand here. Uh huh. But face me. Forward fall. Okay. I can do that. Wait. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Um, wait for my signal. Oh, right. The Jesus signal. <laughs> yes. The okay. Jesus signal. Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus. I trust you so much. Good. Fall back. <laughs> That's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> Especially when you do it. <laughs> Seriously? Of course. Okay, Jesus. I don't know if you noticed this, but there is nobody over there. I know it looks that way to you. <laughs> way it is that way you can do this laura just trust me and fall back jesus i can't do that we can do it together i can't you can i won't as we follow jesus i believe he calls us into deeper intimacy he calls us to trust him more what is he asking you to trust him for this morning Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a marriage that is not good, okay? Maybe it's a, a financial situation, okay? You're having some challenges, okay? Maybe it's, maybe it's your health, okay? What is, it that, what, what is it that God is speaking to you today to trust him more? See, as we follow him, he calls us into, in, into deeper intimacy, in, into more trust. And here's, here's the thing about that, is, is we begin to follow him and we trust him. Man, we learn to trust him a little bit more. And then we learn to trust him a little bit more. And we learn to trust him for bigger things and more things. Jesus calls us to follow him. Mark eight thirty eight. Jesus said, uh, if anyone wants to be my follower, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Following Jesus is hard work, but it's an investment. And I believe God's goodness draws me to follow him. His holiness calls me to repentance. His goodness calls me to follow him. Some of you this morning need to move on to deeper intimacy with God. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but some of you need to move on, right? Being in church on Sunday does not equal following Jesus, okay? I just want you to know that. Uh, I can tell you about my experiences. I can tell you what I've learned, but those things are no substitute for you gaining those things on your own. I've used this illustration a lot, but... Um, I mean, I can tell you about my experiences. I can tell you, you know, we have horses. I love to ride uh, my horse. And I can tell you there's nothing more exhilarating than a horse at a dead run in an open field. And because you're just on the edge of maybe dying. And it's like, it's so exhilarating. Uh, and I can't, I can't explain to you what that's like. But if you do it, you'll know what that's like. I can tell you what it's like to follow Jesus, but until you do it, you're not gonna know. God is calling you to deeper intimacy, to greater trust with him. Following Jesus results in trust and intimacy. Finally, let's look at uh, verse 21. Uh, then they went into Capernaum, and right away he entered the synagogues on the Sabbath and began to teach. They were astonished at his teaching, because unlike the scribes, he was teaching them as one having authority. So as, as, as they're going along, so these, these disciples, they had, 
they had turned from their old way of life. They followed Jesus, and now they're going along with him, and they're beginning to experience this amazing stuff. So he begins to teach, and he says, man, we notice that he teaches with authority. And a few verses later, he casts out a demon, and a few verses later, he heals some people, and then he casts out another demon, then he heals some more people, then he feeds 5,000 people, and all these incredible things begin to happen. And Jesus says, uh, I want you to be my witnesses. Okay, as you follow me as we go along, you're going to begin to acquire stories. Stories about my faithfulness. Stories about my power. Stories about your experiences with me. I want you to be my witnesses. I, from the time the girls were little, I, I always encouraged them to, to take risks, right? To, to step outside of their comfort zone. My, my youngest daughter, Olivia, she misunderstood me when I said to take risks. She thinks that risking her life on a regular basis is, that's not what I meant. <laughs> and stepping outside your comfort zone. You know, doing things that, that push you, all right? Take risks in, in, in your relationship with Jesus. Trust him for something maybe that you've never trusted him for before. Uh, I, I love this, this spring, Olivia's, uh, she's going to Zimbabwe. So after the spring, she'll have been on every continent, all right, on the globe except Antarctica, which I kind of, I'm better with her going to Antarctica than Africa, but you know. <laughs> I don't anymore seem to have a whole lot of say in any of that. But, uh, but, but she comes home with these stories, these stories about how God has worked, stories that, that, of the things that God has done and, and what she's experienced. God calls us to be his witnesses. I would tell you a story, and I tell you this because I, uh, this, is, this is part of my story, all right? Uh, this is a great story because I, I want to tell it because I think it's going to encourage you. And I believe that this is why God gives us these experiences, these stories, is so they can be shared. So a time not too long ago was kind of a, a difficult time for, for Stacy and I. Um, we were kind of contemplating, you know, what is our future here at New Hope? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a lot of years. Is, is God have something new for us? Is it time maybe to move on? And it, it was just, it was kind of a hard time. And, uh, and I especially just really struggled with, you know, what's, what's next for us? And we were sitting in this worship service. Uh, I'd taken a Sunday off, and, and uh, we'd gone somewhere else that Sunday. And, uh, um, you know, where you can kind of be anonymous and, and just kind of enjoy the experience. And uh, so I'm sitting in this worship service, and this, this young man comes up to me. and is somebody I didn't know. Um, I'd never met before, and he didn't know me. And he comes up during the worship service, and he says to me, he says, you don't know me, but I just think God wants you to hear this today. He said, I think God wants you to know that if you feed his sheep, he will take care of you. What do you, what do, you do with that? I said, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and then I just, you know, I just broke down because I was just struck by God's care for me. Okay, I want you to hear that story because I believe stories are important. It's the power of testimony. And, and, and you may not be eloquent. You may be afraid to, to share your testimony, you know, with the, with the people that you work with. But you can share your story. You can share what God has been doing in your life, how he's repaired something that was, was broken, how he found something that was lost. God calls us to be his witnesses. It takes some risk but I think it's well, well worth it. Being a witness results in a changed culture. Being a witness results in a changed culture. I don't believe that, that God has called New Hope to be a big church, but I believe that he's called us to build big people. People that, that change their families, people that, that, that change their, their friend groups, people that, that change the culture, people that can change our city. I mean, look at what Jesus did with 11 people, right? He changed the world. I mean, there's, there's a few more than 11 in here. Think of what we could do in this city if we begin to, to share our story with those around us. What is God calling you to today? I'm gonna ask Kevin if he'll uh, just come on out and I'm just gonna wrap up with a chorus, but... Uh, as we do that, I told you I was going to give you an opportunity this morning to uh, just respond 
uh, to the gospel, the good news. If you're here this morning and, and you've been going your own way, walking away from God, I want to just give you the opportunity to turn, to change direction and walk towards him this morning. God's provided a way to do that. He did it by sending his son Jesus. And, and uh, I'm just going to ask you all to just bow your head this morning, close your eyes. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray this prayer and prayed this many times here. And, you know, this is a prayer that, that I prayed, very similar to the one that I prayed when I was uh, in junior high school. There's not a, a prayer that saves you, but it's, it's the attitude of your heart. If you've never prayed this prayer this morning and, and you want a change of direction in your life, God maybe is speaking to your heart, just pray this with me, between, just between you and God this morning. He knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. Pray this prayer. God, I know that I have sinned. God, I know I need to change direction. I know that I've done life my own way. I want to walk towards you. I want to live my life your way. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. Thank you for raising him three days later. God, thank you for loving me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time this morning, I'm just going to ask you if you just raise your hand. I would love, love to pray for you this morning. If you prayed that for the first time, you just slip your hand up, let me know. I would love to be able to pray for you this morning. What is God calling you to? Maybe he's, maybe he's saying this morning, you need to, to, to take the next step. You need to move a little bit deeper in your relationship with him. I'm, I'm going to put a, a blog post on our Facebook page. Uh, if you're interested, you can look for that tomorrow. Uh, ten ways, uh, just ten suggestions, ten ways that you can grow in your relationship with Jesus. Maybe he's calling you to, to be a witness in your family, to be a witness uh, at your work, to be a witness with your friends. What is God calling you to today? Just prayerfully consider that this morning. After Kevin is uh, done leading us, we'll just be down front here. We'd love to be able to pray with you, pray for you. Uh, we believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God works through it. This